Yeah, one thing I like about, um, I can already tell, comparing to Hawaii, is this, there's just more receptivity because there's more space here, you know? So it's like, there's campgrounds everywhere in every direction here, which I love. And now I have a tattoo on the back of my neck. Actually, I got it when I was 28, I think. It's just like a cross. Um, but it's not just a cross. It also has like the four. So to me, it's always represented the four directions. And just the power of love. And Jesus too. The power of his love and the story that goes with that. And so I feel really resonant with the four directions. And it seems like that's the energy here that there's something in every direction and every direction it's welcoming and we just drove through the Coconino um, forest or camp uh, Coconino area it's like just campground after campground Ooh, we're getting into the good stuff <gasps> So it's called Coconino National Forest, and I had seen it when I was doing research that it was the place I wanted to go. So happy to be here, obviously. For the people that came here to see about like a camp set up, I want to say that I have the the essentials. I have the water, five gallon water, fills up at the store for $1.25, you know, so five gallons of water. I have a little portable shower up here, you know, just the little hangers, they're like 12 bucks, you fill them with water. They don't last long, I didn't want that. I wanted to get a road shower, but um, you know, I'm not gonna invest much more into this. Um, I'll do that. So, but I got, I got all the essentials. I have a little toilet that sits behind my seat back there. It's a little breakdown toilet. My mom went, did some shopping for me. God bless her soul. And yeah, so I have like the basics. Um, I have a bed, I have a shower, I have water, I have electricity. So I can plug that in. I can plug my hair dryer in if I take a shower at night, plug my phone in. You know, I was gonna get more cooking stuff, but whatever. I was going to get like a, a George grill for me and a little thing to plug in and heat water. And I, I don't think I'm going to do that right now. It's just too small. I mean, I might, but that's kind of the basics and that's the way I was going. I don't want to get little camp gut grill, fire grill. If I go to a campground, I have a, a pan, one of those wrought iron pans I could put on the grill and then I was just gonna go electric with my little power thing. And I like that because I don't wanna carry around things that I have to keep replacing, like the um, propane. I don't, I don't wanna have propane in my car. I don't wanna be buying those things. So I'm pretty happy about the electric. Plus, it's I, I can plug it into the car. I can plug it into the wall. Right now it's fully charged. It came fully charged. The whole set that I bought was $1,000. And I think it's better than the Jackeries. I don't know yet. A lot of people say Jackeries kind of suck. And this kind of sucks too. Like when I went to plug in the, the small little Volt um, refrigerator, it sucked it down and said that it would only be able to plug it in for an hour. Here comes a big old truck. So yeah, once I started moving forward and trying the things out, that's when I was like, mm, this isn't totally gonna work. So the power, the power packs are good um, for little things, but yeah, and I got a little cooler. I'm just gonna do ice and keep it chill. So yeah, I wouldn't go very far with that, you know, with this vehicle. I need something bigger. So yeah, I got a little, everything I got is plug-inable. My lantern, and that's really all I have. My lantern, my blow dryer, my phone. Yeah, and like I said, I was going to get a George Foreman, but I'm not. I'm in a little town. I like this town because there's also, like, everything, and then you could, in within, like, a half hour, be in the mountains. So I could go down and get everything I need. I went to get pizza last night. That's fine. There's a natural health food store. There is an organic vegetarian place. There's a nice steakhouse if I choose. So, yeah. 
that's what I recommend if you're traveling. Skip the propane route. Just go fire, fire pit and then just get an electric source, but you're not gonna really be able to power a big refrigerator. So you gotta go with, an e you know, with a little ice chest. So you can let me know if there's a better power, but everything I've heard, you know, I think the EcoFlow is better than the Jackery. And I was gonna get a Jackery and test it out, but I didn't wanna spend the extra money because I just basically dropped like with the help of my mom, $1,500 in this move, or excuse me, 15,000. Car's worth 10, but yeah, costs a lot to do all this so far. So I'm gonna start saving again. See you guys soon. Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> just because I don't think I'm gonna do another video about this for a while. I just wanna point out some of the stuff I learned with the power packs. Like the EcoFlow, it came with 99% power life. And as soon as you plug something into it, it tells you how long it's going to be able to power that thing for. And like when I plugged my cell phone into it, I could, I could power my phone for 10 hours. Obviously, I'm not going to need to. But that's kind of what you get out of it. And then like when I plugged the, my hair dryer in, um, you know, I could get nine hours out of that. And when I plugged the refrigerator in, like I said, it was only one. And I haven't really plugged anything else into it yet. Um, but I think it's going to be kind of that. I, what I did learn is that the, the refrigerators are the things that really take up the most power and it depends. It's like the, obviously the more expensive refrigerator, the less power it's going to take because you have like a generator or like a, a, a different kind of system. But if you get these little volt things, they, they, they take up so much energy. Um, so yeah, I don't even have enough room to buy one in this car. This car is a lot smaller than I thought it was. I hoped it was, I should say. Um, but it's good for now. Again, I love the moonroof. I love the height. And I like it as it is. I don't want to pull it apart and try to make it into a, you know, long-term camper. I don't think it'll work. Not for me. All right, guys. Love having a roof rack, though. When I was camping in Hawaii and I was doing a set setup where I did take out all the chairs. I think the reason why I don't want to take all these chairs out is because I just paid $10,000 for this car. So, well, I paid $9,500 for it. So, but then I also had to put $1,000 worth of new tires on it. So, um, I didn't want to take it apart. It's too valuable. So, when I had my old Toyota Sienna though, minivan, yeah, I'd throw those chairs away, who cares? I only paid like $3,000 for that car. So, I don't want to tear this one apart. I'm pretty happy with just, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it is, but I won't go very far in it. So I don't know what I'm going to do about actually getting power into a refrigerator when I go, but that is why I'm going to look at just bigger cars. Maybe I'll just get one with, yeah, a full setup, like an actual camper. Look at my little baby. Okay, guys, more later. One other thing I want to say about the Honda elements is they are kind of loud. I heard that too, like crickety. Like, I really like how, like, let me show you a little bit more about this particular element. So, like, I like this simple kind of no electric window style. Both the back windows pop open, and that I really like. However, I don't want to drive with it that way because it's loud. I don't like the sound. Oh, I gotta pop open the sunroof. But the sunroof's kind of the same way, it's not electric you just like pop it open. So yeah, it's just kind of this little thing, you know, a little mechanism, and that I can drive with open. Charlotte loves to sit back here when I'm cruising with that open, and I like that too. But yeah, I don't want to leave the sides open. It's good for when I'm sleeping in there. You know, we wake up in the morning and it's hot. We can pop these open easy, get some, you know, get some air in there. But not a lot of storage in here either, kind of loud. Again, not the best gas mileage. Really bad gas mileage, I think. I was hoping to at least get 300 miles out of a gas tank. But no. Lots of fucking beeping, too. God, beeps. Fuck beeps. If I don't want to wear my seatbelt, I don't need my car to tell me that I should put my seatbelt on. So, yeah. Okay, update. This thing is the biggest fucking piece of shit. A thousand fucking dollars. 
And look, it hasn't even charged my phone once. Not even once. Look what happens. Oh, so you, you buy it and you turn it on, you're like, oh, cool, 99 hours. Here, let me plug my phone in. Oh, 52 minutes? 52 fucking minutes. That's it. Okay. So what really happened is that I plugged it in and it said like six hours. So I was like, great, my phone's going to be, you know, plug. Actually, I think it said eight hours. It still hasn't even plugged my phone. It still hasn't even charged my phone. While it was charging it, I was like, let me, let me put it to the test. And I plugged in my hair dryer on the other side and it dropped down in 15 minutes. It hasn't even gone back up. I used my hair dryer for like four minutes. This thing is a complete piece of fucking shit. What a fucking waste of time and money. Okay, so I found this other USB that actually says fast charge underneath. So I'm gonna see it. This is, this is the one chance it has to actually plug my phone. I'm gonna leave it in the whole time. And it somehow using the fast charge, it did bump it up to one hour. So wow, one hour of power for a thousand fucking dollars just to charge my cell phone. That's just absolutely fucking bonkers. And the other night, I just turned it off. I just was like, forget it. I had 67, whatever. So I just left it and charged my phone when I drove the next morning. So this is the chance. Let's see how far this one hour gets my phone because my phone right now is on 3%. So this is the only chance EcoFlow has to charge anything of mine. Doesn't look like it's gonna be very successful. But yeah, fast charge, I guess, is the best possible option. So, who knows? Wish them luck. I'm a pretty thorough investigation here. So basically, it's been an hour. My phone is only charged 65%. This only went down 20 minutes. So I guess it has a chance to actually charge my phone, which obviously is not worth the money. I'm still returning this. And I think they're pretty good about their return policy because I think they know that this isn't very good um, or that there are problems with it. They do try to talk about how it's, you know, an ecological, environmental protection, safety, non-toxic product. That's why I want to get it, you know? And then they also promote how it, ch um, when you plug it into a wall, it'll charge to full capacity in like under two hours where I guess other things other batteries takes a long time to charge them. But even if you put this, plug this into your car or if you use the solar panel, it's still gonna take like eight to 12 hours. So this whole idea of having a battery, portable battery is a good idea, but it's, it's, not, it's not really worth the money. It's not really effective. So I think I'm just gonna have to go for a full blown regular solar panel. And the other thing is I've made sure to not even use my phone this whole time, so it's off charging. Normally a phone would charge to full capacity in a wall unit in an hour. Like I said, it's only at 67% right now and it's been over an hour that it's charging. So there you go. You go flow. Good luck. Do not charge my phone one single time. My phone is at 73%. It's been an hour and a half and we are at zero. One minute, zero. It turned itself off.